This is the Satin Lounge. Breathe it in. Well, she's back. The ambassador of the Hetrick Martin Institute, two-time Emmy Award-winning soap siren, actress, director, producer, entrepreneur, and now you can add author. Satin Lounge, please welcome back the multi-talented and unstoppable Crystal Chappelle. Hi. <laughs> that, you write the best, and I just want you to follow me around and write introductions for me wherever I go. Well, I already you write, follow you you're around. You're so, so generous, and wow. But it's all very, very, very true. <gasps> you, you hold all of these titles, and you do them all very well. I don't know how you do them all very well, but oh. you do. Well, um, thank you. You know, you've got a lot going on all the time. I, I try to. Yeah? I do. I'm, it's I'm, on purpose? Um, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a better busy person than I am an idle person. Okay, so... so is, for the benefit is, of uh, everyone's benefit, everyone's, it's best that I keep swimming. Okay, okay. just keep swimming. That's got it. it. Got it. So, uh, what aids you? Is it is it the Red Bull? Is it the coffee? Uh, uh, do you, uh, yeah, it is Red Bull. It um, is. <laughs> I should own stock in the company. And, you should. Um, uh, and Sponsor Venice Red Bull. What is I've, the deal with they, you? Yeah, they're fantastic. And, um, no, just I have a lot of people who help me. Uh-huh. So, so it, it, you know, it takes a village. Okay. So you're inspired by the village and that's what keeps you going. Yep. I got you. I got you. That's a good motivator. Um, there are so many things that you are into right now, of which we hope to be able to get to as many as we can tonight. Um, firstly, you've written a book, haven't you? I, I have. Mm-hmm. I have. It's called The Perfect Art of Imperfection and um, came out uh, New Year's Eve. It came out New Year's Eve in Satin Lounge. She's naked on the cover. Uh, yeah, calm down, lesbians. She's, she's turned around backwards. It's, you know, uh, yeah. No, but still, she's naked. And uh, Crystal, thank you. I'm just saying thank you for my New Year's present. Oh, anything for Anything you. for me? <laughs> anything. I mean, but um, why, the, why the naked book cover? Haven't you given your fans enough of you? I'm just saying. I mean, you give them everything. Um, honestly, I didn't know what I was going to do for the cover, and people were telling me that I should you know, put my face on it so mm-hmm. people know what to look for. Mm-hmm. And I did a um, uh, Carly uh, Rogers, Carly Louise, Shout out, Carly. Carly. And uh, she was doing a school project, and she lives very close to me. Okay. And um, uh, she needed uh, nude models for her projects, and she's done so much for me, certainly being okay. on my set and lugging things around. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll come wow. and I'll do it. And um, uh, so it was really just for that. It uh-huh. wasn't meant to, to be a cover. And when I saw it, she did such beautiful work. It really and, was. It is. Rather. And... Um, uh, the tattoos and mm-hmm. you know that's not I don't see that those that often because they're behind me, um, <laughs> but it just seemed fitting uh, that yeah. this is this is an imperfect body an imperfect what? person. Well, it, yes, I, I you know I'm, <laughs> Sad loud. I'm very happy with how Sad I'm very healthy, and very happy. Um, but it's it just <laughs> that's what resonated with me that and I asked her if I could use it and she said okay so that's yeah that I'll, I'll go with the explanation that you were raw and so you needed to be you know you were exposed you needed to be naked but the imperfection part of the I body really just, I really I mean, just walk just, around without clothes on as much as possible you know what um, where do you live again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, Satin Lounge, really, it's a beautiful cover, um, and it's a beautiful book. Uh, You've been pretty open with your fans. You tweet all the time. You write a blog on occasion about your life and all its intricate happenings. Um, There were some painful confessions in this particular book. Uh, Why did you want to become that transparent? You really didn't have to. Um... You know, I, I really uh, hadn't thought about writing a book earlier in my career, but I felt like I was approaching um, a transition in my life. Okay. Not just, um, you know, genre uh, dwindling and all that good stuff. Um, I, I'm still very much a part of it, but I, I just felt like I wanted to do something different with my life. You know, I'm 47. Mm-hmm. My kids are going to be 13 and 10 this year. Mm-hmm. I think I've. it's only been in the last 
a year and a half, two years, or I mean, ever since I, you know, I left days, that I've really been able to plan my own course. Yeah. And be home with my children. Okay. That I can plan my life around them. And, um, and obviously, you know, I've been through therapy and I felt like it was time to share my story with people mm-hmm. because so many people have shared theirs with me oh. and been extremely honest and trusted me with it. Um, that's why Venice was born. You know, mm-hmm. it was out of Otalia, but also the response that people mm-hmm. had with it and then just opened up to me and it really, really touched me. So I kind of felt like I was at that place in my life. I was resolved about the things that had happened uh-huh. and it was time to, to share that. And I figure if even one person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, gets something out of it and, you know, God forbid if it's relatable to them, but if they feel like, you know, if she can get past her shame and go and do what she's done... Mm-hmm and live a happy life, then then there's a win in, in, in it wow. for all of us. Yeah, I just applaud your bravery because in this book, you're very emotionally graphic in, in my opinion. It, some of the parts were hard for me to read. It was just, wow, you know, that's pretty transparent from the, you know, the abuse, the uh, godless years, the dysfunction, I mean, the cutting. I mean, there was a lot you were sharing. Uh, was a bit of it therapeutic for you to do that? Or? It was very cathartic. It really was. Like I said, I've been into therapy, and you know, I had I went back into therapy in January of uh, eleven mm-hmm. for six months mm-hmm. um, because I, I I was cutting again and I needed a tune up, and <laughs> I needed a tune up, and um, and it was it was hilarious because I I mean I was very fortunate my first go around coming uh-huh. off of and working on days that I had the money to afford like a really good good shrink and mm-hmm. um and so i went back in and i you know you get older you stop wasting time mm-hmm. you know when somebody's 250 dollars now you go well i'm Ooh. doing this 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 and this <laughs> you don't even you know beat right. around the bush right so Let's get to the point. uh and it was funny because she said you know she pointed some things out to me and i went well God, didn't we take care of that like the last time she goes honey it's wow. always there wow and like I said, I needed a tune-up because I was I had recurring behavior mm-hmm. um, uh, that I hadn't experienced in over a decade wow. plus that had come back. So, so it's all it's always there. So it's always there, and it, and it's always your choice in how you handle it. And I felt like your book was more about less about the drama that happens behind the scenes and and so, mm-hmm. and more about the choices or or what you've learned or how you've learned to handle in a healthier way you know uh dysfunction um the emotional roller coasters maybe the insecurities or what have you how you've learned to to go to a different place with that and we can all learn from that i think all of us at one time or another have reached for a solution or some answers in unhealthy places sure and um, it's, I think it's just really brave of you to uh, just share that and expose that with the world. I, I know it helps people when, when you're transparent. There's so many people looking up to you. And some of them may be going through what you have gone through. I know they are. That Since, I've, um, since the book has come out, I've had fans that I've, I've known for quite some time mm-hmm. tell me their story. Wow. If it's one piece of it or the other. How does that make you feel? Um, I, you know, I, I, I feel bad that they had to go through that. Yeah. Um, but I also feel, uh, you know, if, if they can relate and, and, and know that I'm, I get it. Mm-hmm. I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm here. It's a safe place to be. You don't have to worry about hiding anything. There's nothing worse than, mm-hmm. than feeling like you have to hide And feeling who alone. You are. Feeling alone yeah. as if there's no one else who can relate to you. Right. Absolutely. Uh, You're not alone, Satin Lounge. Crystal's here.